knows how to be mercenary, though she's never been in a court of an assembly. We have it in our nature's papa. If I allow Captain Keith some trifling liberties, I have this watch and other visible marks of his favor to show for it. A girl who cannot grant some things and refuse what is most material will make but a poor hand of her beauty and soon be thrown upon the common. <laughs> secret or so, but if I find you have played the fool and are married, you jade, you I'll cut your throat, has eh? Now, you know my mind. Oh, Paul, it is a sad slut, for he's what we have daughter. I watched her and he's never alive would ever rear a daughter, for she must have both hoops and gowns and hoops as well as boys. And she have men beside, and when she's dressed with care and cost, look and think who it be. As rich as her, the cow of her, she flings herself away. A party is a sad sight for you. We can do it. We can't rear a daughter. You, you baggage, you hussy, you inconsiderate jade. Had you been hanged, it would not have vexed me, for that might have been a your own misfortune. But to do such a mad thing by choice. The wench is married, as Oh, ma married. Oh, to be sure, the captain is bold and will risk anything for money. He believes her a fortune. Do you think your mother and I should have lived comfortably so long together if ever we had been married? Baggage? I knew she was always a proud slut. And now the wench hath gone and married and played the fool. Forsooth, she would do like the gentry. Can you can you bear the expense of a husband fuzzy in gaming, in drink, and an orange? If you must be married, could you introduce nobody into our family but an highwayman? Why, thou foolish jade, thou wilt be as ill-used and as much neglected as if thou hadst married a lord. Let not your anger, my dear, Break through the bounds of decency. Tell me, honey, are you ruined or no? Oh, how a mother is to be pitied who have handsome daughters. They have as much pleasure in cheating the mother and father as in cheating the cards. Well, Polly, I shall soon know if you are married by McKeith's keeping away from our house. <laughs>
the key, they hang his father and mother-in-law in hopes to get into their daughter's fortune. But I did not marry him, as tis the fashion, coolly and deliberately for money or honor, but I love him. <laughs> love him? Worse and worse. I thought the girl had been better bred. Oh, husband, husband, her folly makes me mad. My head swims. I'm distracted. Oh, I can't support myself. Oh, 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 oh. See, honey, to what a state you've reduced your poor mother. A glass of cordial this instant. Oh, oh, my dear. Oh. Now, Huzzy, this is the only comfort your poor mother has left. Give her another glass, sir. My mama drinks double the quantity whenever she's out of order. Uh, this, you see, fetches her. <laughs> the girl shows such a readiness and so much concern that I almost could find it into me heart to forgive her. <laughs> Oh, Polly, you might have toyed and kissed by keeping men off. You keep them on. So it is, so it is, me, but it is, so it is, me. What I did, you must have done. So it is, so it is, me, but it is, so it is, you. What I did, you must have done. What I did. Dear wife, be a little pacified. I have an idea. I think we'll set matters again to right them. Why so melancholy, Polly? Since what you've done cannot be undone, we must all endeavor to make the best of it. Aye. As far as one woman can forgive another, I forgive thee, hussy. Your father is much too fond of you, hussy. <laughs> then all my sorrows are at an end. A mighty likely speech and trough for a wench who is just married. Unlike a ship in storms was tossed in a free to go cannot be left as they are. You are married, then it seems. Yes, sir. And how do you propose to live, child? Like other women, sir, upon the industry of my husband. <laughs> what? Is the wench turned fool? Ah, I women's wife, like a soldier's, half as little of his pay as of his company. Uh, and had not you the common views of a gentlewoman in your marriage, Polly. I don't know what you mean, sir. Of being a widow. But I love him. How then could I have thought of parting with him? <laughs> parting with him? Why, that is the whole scheme and intention of all marriage articles. The comfortable estate of widowhood is the only hope that keeps up a wife's spirits. Where is the woman who would scruple to be a wife if she had it in her power to be a widow whenever she pleased. How oh, I dread to hear your advice. Secure what he hath got, have him peached in the next sessions, and at once you are made a rich widow. Murder the man I love? The blood runs cold into my heart at the very thought of it. Fie, Polly, what hath murder to do in the case? Since the matter must happen sooner or later, I dare say the captain would prefer that we should receive the reward for his death rather than a perfect stranger. Just as the captain knows tis his business to rob, so tis our employment to take robbers, each man to his own affairs. So 
There's no malice in the case. Oh, my husband, now you've nicked the matter to have him peached is the only thing make me a giver. Oh, Ha <laughs> ha! 